Hello folks, today we're in HQ taking a look at another water cooling kit, this time from Eco Waterblocks. So this is their classic P360 RGB kit, and the idea here is that it's an intermediate level kind of kit with a thick radiator, 360 millimeters, full RGB, but coming in at a lower price point because this is using their classic line. Now what's the crucial difference between the classic line and their regular components? Well, the classic line is actually made in China rather than in Slovenia. So if you remember, we did a factory tour uh, earlier last year. Now that's where the majority of the parts are made, but to be able to bring their parts to a different audience and make it a sort of a wider scale, they're also going to be doing the classic line from China, which has the same sort of aesthetic, but just at a lower price point. So that's what this kit is comprised of today. And we're gonna take a look at how it stacks up against the competition and whether or not this is the sort of thing you should be interested in getting into if you haven't done water cooling before. So let's get this kit all unpacked and I can talk you through some of the things that are inside. Ah. So now we've got all the parts out of the box, let's go take a look in detail at what some of the things are that are included in this kit, along with maybe some of the things that you're gonna to need to add to it just so you can get it running in your system. So starting off, you've got your CPU block, which comes default with an Intel mounting bracket, but it also comes with an AMD one as well in the box. You've got six compression fittings. Now these are soft tube compression fittings because this is a soft tube kit and it comes with two meters of soft tubing as well. Next up, you've got your radiator, which is a 360 millimeter, 40 mil thick one. So this is a bit thicker than the thermal tech kit that we previously reviewed. So just make sure that if you're putting this on the top of your case, you've actually got proper clearance for that. It's not too thick though, so it should still fit in the majority of chassis which are capable of putting a 360 millimeter radiator up there. In addition, you've also got some mounting options, which are going to be used for this, which is your pump res system. Now, one of the interesting things about this one is it actually doesn't use a DDC pump. So this is a smaller SPC pump, which is a more budget range. And I'm not entirely sold personally on having one of these and things. I would much prefer having even a lower end DDC, maybe without PWM control like this one sports, just because I'm much more comfortable with that particular ecosystem. I'm not entirely sure how much expandability this particular pump has. So maybe if you were to in the future expand to having more than one graphics card or multiple radiators and just a larger loop in general, this might struggle a bit. But again, I don't 100% know that. Um, all I know is that a DDC does work very well for all of that kind of material and is much more powerful and is very reliable and proven. Now, this is evident in the fact that the higher price kits from EK do come with proper DDCs and D5s in them. So this is definitely a more budget offering and explains the lower price point of this kit. Now, additionally, we've also got some coolant concentrate. Now, this means you're gonna to have to get some deionized or distilled water to be able to add to this. So we're gonna be doing that later because you need to mix your own. And this is quite a handy thing for space saving, but it does mean you have to take that into account. Now, it also doesn't come with a fill bottle. So you either have to use some kind of funnel system or a fill bottle from another purpose. You can pick them up quite easily in the dollar store anyway, so it's not a big deal, but you just need to make sure you have something to hand to help you fill the system. Additionally, we've also got some RGB splitters to go with the fans because this is an RGB kit. So we've got RGB in both the CPU and the pump, and we've also got the fans. But this isn't digital RGB. This is just the analog standard four pin kind of 12 volt one. So just bear that in mind. You won't be able to have the same level of control as you get with some of the other kits and other parts on the market, including some of EK's higher end offerings, which are all going to be digital. So just it's worth considering that maybe if you want to have a full RGB ecosystem, is this the right kind of thing for you? Because you're gonna to have to have motherboard control or buy a separate controller for it. As ever, one thing that I am happy to see though is a bridging plug, because obviously if you don't have one of these, you have to bridge it yourself, which isn't a very newcomer friendly thing, quite frankly. It's very easy, but if you don't have a bridging plug, it can feel a little bit daunting and a bit hacky. So it's nice to see one of these in the kit. So now we've had a look through the actual parts themselves, we're gonna go pop it into our test rig and we're gonna be using our X299 18 core system once more, just because it belches out a huge amount of heat. So it's a good test for kits like these because you can really find out whether or not the 360 millimeter radiator and the CPU block are doing their business. And we'll be able to check out how it stacks against some of the competition.
So we've got the kit all installed into our test rig system and I've got a few words about this one actually um, because the installation process wasn't quite as good as I thought it was going to be. So probably the first thing that you can see visually here is that you see these long loping runs. This is a result of not having any angled adapters in the kit. And I was a little bit dismayed to find out that we didn't have any angled adapters at all because I think quite often it's really, really convenient to have them. So if you take a look at these ones coming straight out of the pump res here, uh, as you can see, they, they go right out to the edge of the case. And I'd much prefer it if we had two 90 degree adapters that can just maybe take the tubing lines straight to the CPU. Or in this case, I'd have preferred to take this tube up to this port on the radiator to make it neater and have that tube in the back go to the CPU there. Instead, I've had to wrap them differently to prevent the tubing from kinking because obviously this is quite near the front. Now there's every chance that you're not able to mount your pump res as far back as we have in this case, because the other thing is that you don't get a tube mounting kind of kit with this particular pump res combo. So you have a uni bracket, which you can put onto 120 millimeter fan uh, spaces, but it doesn't come with a clamp. So if you, for instance, wanted to mount this up on the back somewhere over there where the hard drive cages used to be, you're out of luck. The issue there is, of course, these go right up against the front panel. And if this was only one centimeter further on, uh, further forwards, they'd be scraping against it. And there's a good risk that this would kink. Like if I move this a bit further, you can see it starts to flatten already. So just having it like that is already a little bit too close. So personally, if you were getting a kit like this, I would always make sure to get a couple more angled adapters because they can make all the difference. Now, interestingly enough, filling it was also quite difficult because EK uses these recessed ports on the tops of their reservoirs. Now, this means that you actually don't have any means of purchase for these stop plugs. Now, you'd expect then that they'd include an Allen key, such as one of these ones, which come with all the other parts of the kit, but actually they didn't have one of the correct size that I could find in the kit at all. Maybe there is one, but I don't see it listed anywhere, and ours doesn't seem to have one. So we weren't able to open it from the uh, top port here to fill it. Now, interestingly enough, in the instructions, they say to remove the whole reservoir cap to fill your system. Now, the difficulty there is, of course, the threading on the cap is actually the same as the threading on the base of the reservoir. So if you're not careful and you've already threaded it and unthreaded it, there's every chance that you could accidentally loosen the fit on the bottom of the reservoir, which of course would be disastrous and you'd have a bit of a leak coming out of there. Now that could either be a very small one and you just tighten it up and you notice it, or it could be quite a large one depending on how far over it's gone. Now I was quite lucky in that I noticed that it's the same thing, so I pulled it back, but it's, you know, if you're a newcomer, you may not have noticed that sort of thing and it's a very easy mistake to make. Additionally, because this pump isn't that strong, it also wasn't easy to fill it using one of these. So this is like a, a sponge that comes with the uh, reservoir. And this is used to create turbulence and break up the flow so you don't just get bubbles going back in and acts as a filter. But of course it does put a lot of flow restriction in. And actually when we had this in the reservoir itself, it literally didn't work. We couldn't fill it up at all. So we had to fish it out with a chopstick and then put it on the side. So if you're doing this with this exact kit for the first time, don't bother with this, just put it on the side. It's not even in the instructions. I'm sure nobody really uses them. I've never used one. Uh, and I've seen some have actually broken down in their loops over time. So honestly, I think you're just better off ignoring it. In terms of connecting up all the other pieces, it's pretty straightforward. It uses standard RGB. So using the 12 volt um, splitter cables that come with the kit, it's very easy. You can add it all in. And obviously we've got it all running off uh, the motherboard. That's another little sticking point because there is no manual method of RGB control. So unless you have a third party controller which does it for you, you are sort of locked to your motherboard software doing it properly. And I know from experience that maybe with a Windows update, your software might actually break and you have suddenly have zero control and you're stuck on RGB rainbow forever. So I'd personally prefer a method uh, in the kit of um, not having to use software control but at the end of the day, it's not a really big deal because most of the time it's going to be fine. One thing I did appreciate though, is the fact that this pump runs off a motherboard fan header. If you have no power into your motherboard when you're doing the filling, of course that's going to be a bit of an issue. And EK does provide a SATA adapter that you can plug into it so you can run it directly from your power supply. And as I mentioned earlier, it's also nice that they also provided a bridging plug so you don't need to use any sort of hacky methods like paper clips or staples to get your power supply going. With that all said and done, it's now time to hand it over to Matt to do some thermal testing and see how it stacks up against the competition.
So as with the thermal tick kit, we are using our standard LGA 2066 test system, which includes an Intel 18 core CPU, giving us plenty of heat. We've got a fixed overclock using a fixed frequency, fixed voltage, all of that, and we apply a constant load, the same load for 15 minutes. So it keeps things nice and consistent. Now you can find the full details of the test system on the website, but the reason we're using the 678C case from Corsair is that it allows us to replicate high airflow and low airflow using the door. So with that, we'll jump into the results. In the best case scenario, the EK kit is a little behind the thermal take, but there was a slightly higher ambient temperature with this one. And once this is accounted for, the difference is pretty meaningless. Although we were still expecting performance parity. There certainly doesn't appear to be anything untoward, but nor does the EK kit outshine the competitor. The fans on this kit are rated for 12 volts only and behaved very oddly when fed anything below this. So it's PWM control only. To replicate seven volts as closely as we could, we opted for a locked 58% PWM speed. Reducing airflow like this has a very similar effect as on the thermal take kit, which again is a few degrees cooler this time at a similar ambient. Using 41% fan duty to simulate five volts, the temperature predictably climbs again. This temperature is high, yes, but the CPU is still a good 11 degrees away from throttling, so there's still sufficient airflow to keep things from spiraling at low noise levels, especially as most of you will have a less demanding CPU or overclock. With the doors closed to simulate a highly restricted airflow environment, we now need full speed fans to keep the same level of performance as 41% PWM with the doors open, highlighting again the importance of airflow even when water cooling. Interestingly, the balance swings in EK's favor here, as the thermal take kit in a similar situation is warmer, even at a lower ambient temperature, suggesting EK's fans have the upper hand when it comes to static pressure. Finally, as with thermal take, a low noise setting for the fans in a low airflow environment sees the limit of the kit reached, and the CPU quickly hits TJ Maxx and throttles down. So wrapping things up, we do think that the kit is mostly well equipped. It could do with some angled adapters and some better mounting options for the reservoir, and it would also be kind of reassuring and nice if the pump was a DDC model. But the one that we have, it certainly doesn't show any signs of poor performance. Uh, in fact, it's pretty much on par with thermal take, give or take a few degrees, not really anything to get too excited or worried about. Elsewhere, the RGB is good and we like the addition of a SATA plug for the pump. It means you can do it without turning on the whole system. And also the, the little bridging plug for the PSU is always nice to see. However, when it comes to pricing, we do think that EK could do with dropping things a little bit because we, we kitted out the same thing on their web store and there really is no difference in price in terms of just buying the same thing separately as opposed to buying the kit. So it's pretty much just price parity. Uh, and what this means is there's no real incentive to buy the kit like there was on the Thermal Take one. So you may as well just buy the thing separately, get exactly what you want, exactly what you need. You can maybe do away with things that you don't want, save some money, get the angled adapters, etc. But if the price was to come down, it would be a more outright recommendation. As it stands, however, it's gonna be one of those ones where there's nothing stopping us recommending it if you happen to like what you see, but equally, it's not one of those where we're just gonna be like, definitely go and buy it. So with that in mind, we hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, please leave us your feedback in the comments below. Subscribe if you like what you see. Follow us on social media, and I will see you next time.